Right, I've been wanting to do this for some time. This here's a little forging hammer found in Somerset on a verge when I was doing surveys. It was very, very rusty, you can see from the inside of the eye. And the handle has seen better days. So what I want to do is to finish restoring this. Alas, I didn't take photos of it before the restoration started. And I want to fit this handle, which we made last month. It is now quite well seasoned. And you can see that will go on there. Pop that there like that. Go in there like that. Be cut off about there. There is a knot in it. So that'll be in the uh, the bulb of the handle. Shouldn't impinge on anything. And basically, it should uh, make a very nice ham handle for a very nice hammer. A bit longer than the one that was there originally. But it looks very much like this has, has just been chopped off by somebody. They also put ridges in it to act as uh, hand grips because it's basically a very plain handle. It's all the same diameter all the way down. It gets a little bit broader here, the bulb where the head is supposed to stop. But the issue, you can see it here, if we pull this out, is that the tunnel is parallel. Right, hold on, I'll come back to you in a minute. So this is the old handle that's been taken out. And you can see that it's completely parallel. In order for the head to stay where it's put without resorting to glue, which I don't like, I think it's cheating, I'm going to have to use a burr to take this tunnel in the head out so that it's bell-shaped here. So instead of the sides being parallel, so if that's the left-hand side, goes like that. And it also goes like that on the bottom. So it's like a like a woman's waist if you like in the middle. So that it will go down onto the handle to a certain distance. And then the top, the end of the handle will be splayed out this way and splayed out that way. So the head itself can't move. It's Sunday morning it's early so we shan't be starting that now. I'll come back to you when I've done some more work on the head. You will have noticed that both pins are blue and all that is is marker pens. Because what I want to do is keep the original profile of the heads. So this one's flat, this one is down for spreading. And basically the blue allows me to use a flat wheel on an angle grinder to take the ends down to remove this pitting. And if you colour it in blue, then take off the blue, same amount, all the way over the whole of the head. You remove the surface by small gradations, and you don't wind up putting a flat in it. And you can see more pitting here. That pitting on the side will probably stay. And this bit here gives you an idea how rusty it was. It was crispy rusty. And the same issue with this head which has got quite a nice profile. So we have to keep that. That's why it's blue. Right, talk to you later when I've done some work on the tunnel in the head, the socket. No maker's name on this, by the way. But it looks like a good bit of steel. Right, sitting here in the evening, quietly doing a trial fit of the forging hammer head onto this handle. And the first thing you do is you mark here or somewhere so you know which way the head goes on because you can never rely on everything being totally symmetrical so this goes this way up with these three marks here facing upwards or away from the wielder's hand and it goes the same way round on here get it so it almost fits and then you put in your uh, your cut for your uh, your wedge and that goes down third to halfway and just here is the depth of the head not marked it very strongly because I kind of don't need to and it'll probably go a little bit further than that so it sticks out a little bit but not too far and it'll fit nicely on here because this is now uh, belled out 
what you don't want to do is to come down and fit it on an abrupt ledge down here you want it to uh, to fit and stop on the taper and then slowly swell out onto this uh, swelling here if you fit it onto an abrupt ledge then you're putting a stress razor into the handle and when the thing gets old it's more likely to break so you want to avoid that so we'll keep on uh, gently with the little draw knife and you can see the size of the uh, shavings I've been raising nice and small little by little gently gently catchy monkey right a bit more off camera and then I'll do a little bit more on camera as we get closer again and you can see where there's rust still in the middle of the tunnel you can see where it's leaving witnesses and you can also see just about here where my fingernail is that it's squashed the, uh, the wood in and left another witness so the next job is basically to uh, shave it down there until it's this size because this is giving you the size of the tunnel in the head so these eight faces have got to come off and these faces here have got to come off so stick it down there and that's where we're aiming for draw knife and I use it with the bevel down because you can take a tiny little bit off You see, I was too lazy to go and get any hammer. So, three strokes, three strokes. So she goes on like that. Get her started. And you're using the inertia of the head to drive your handle home. Well, that is there. So that's more than halfway. And you can see that this uh, saw cut's closed up. You can open that out later, and it will actually open out as it comes through the tunnel. So let's give it another smack, and then we'll take it off. There you go, three quarters of the way through. she goes and there's your witness on the handle and you've got another witness there if we can get the sun on it and there and there so again you've got a shape there there and there this side there's no witness so you don't need to take any off that side the other thing to keep an eye on is whether or not the head is sitting straight. So if it's sitting on the cock like that, then that's obviously not a good plan. It's got to sit like that and sit nice and straight and true in the other dimension. Right, I'll turn you off and I'll shave away this and then come back. Right, we're nearly there, look. 
it's on pretty hard again. No significant bevel raised anywhere around there. So it hasn't fitted on a hard ledge. It's not sitting on a hard ledge. Got a nice big swell. So it won't waltz down the shaft in use. And that's the finished length. See the pencil mark? And that'll fit nicely to my hand. I've only got little hands for a bloke. So a little bit more shaping on the handle up here. And another fitting. It's sitting more or less straight. And that way. And that will work very well, I think. Right, let's just knock the head off again and finish it off camera because this video is getting kind of long right so that's the head off again hopefully for the last time and you can see your witnesses and there's a bit of a hard ledge here so we'll take a bit more off this side you can see that uh, the bell here is slightly asymmetrical it's because I made it myself and we'll take a little bit more off this side try and knock it down on this side a bit more this here is about right there's no witness no hard ledge and about there it's about right so can you see what we're aiming for the next job which I'll do off camera is to make a wedge your wooden wedge needs to be hardwood it needs to go right from this edge to that edge of the tunnel and to fit inside the tunnel to the required depth and that will push the handle that way and then we'll have a single steel wedge that doesn't go all the way across to push it that way and that way and we won't be using glue to stick it in, which you see a lot on YouTube, which I was taught was uh, basically to make up deficiencies in the technique of the person fitting the head. But anyway, you look on YouTube or some or elsewhere, take the ideas and do your own best job to suit yourself. Right, wedges. I like to make me wedges out of hardwood. And I basically pick up my hardwood wherever I can. That's a bit of, uh, looks like Iroko or something similar. Tropical hardwood, it's heavy. Not nearly as heavy as this stuff. Uh, this was uh, sitting, minding its own business in the top of a skip. And it's a bit of mahogany or something very similar. That'll make nice wedges, fairly long grained. You can see it there. This end is split. But yeah, fairly hard to work. You can work it with a draw knife if it's in a long length like that. Or if it's something like this, which is a bit of oak. This is parquet flooring. Makes good wedges. And this is a bit of uh, probably green heart. Out of Swanage Pier. It was bobbing about when I went for a dive under the pier. So I nabbed it. And basically your wedge needs to fit inside your eye of your, your handle, of your hammer or your axe. So this bit here is the tunnel, and that bit there fits all the way across the length of the thing. Once you've got your, uh, your wood wedge, you need there's another bit that would probably not quite do. See it's a little bit small, but it might do for that one. Once you've got your wood wedge, you need your uh, metal wedge and this is far too big this is a number four they come in numbers one two three and four they're the easily found ones that would do for that dimension but usually you fit your wood wedge so it goes along the longitudinal dimension of your your eye and that goes in first and then your metal wedge goes across to swell it in this direction and that goes in second so this is too big that one is a number three which partly goes in but is again too big and 
That's a number two. And you can see how they're all made. Made in England. Used to be all the best stuff was made in England, but that's gone a bit by the wayside. And that's slightly too big. Number two in this case isn't a euphemism. So we're back to number one, which is that one. And that's as good as we're going to get. So we go for number one wedge. We can also get smaller ones, look. That one's been previously used. And it appears to say number four, maybe. That's too small for what we want. And you can also make your own. That's probably an off cut from something. But that would turn into a wedge with a little bit of working. So anyway, right, we'll uh, get this all ready to go in, into our handle, which has been recut down to halfway, just on. That's your uh, register, or your witness, or where it sits on the eye. See, it's all shiny, where it's been uh, in place before. And don't forget, you need to know which way around it is, so your three marks line up with your three marks here goes in for the underside. Well stick you on my head and we'll get that going. Tap. And the other hammer pressed into service. And there we go, that's plenty. Pop them in there like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just chop this off. So there's not quite so much hanging out. And for that, we're going to use the trusty hacksaw, which really needs a new blade, look. look yeah that's not moving see it goes on there and take our wedge which we measured and some of that stuff other wood glues are available this is partly to get the wedge wood the, your wooden wedge to stay in where's my screwdriver gone there it is And partly to help it slide home. There we go. Tra -la -la. Right, put that back on. Don't want the gorilla to go off, do we? Put that over there. You don't want some more crap. And that goes in there like that. Knocking fully home, and we've got a bit of rag, and it looks like our wedge cut wasn't quite deep enough. Never mind, because the wedge, although we measured it, doesn't quite go all the way through. There's a a little, little gap there, so give it another tap. It's definitely not going in any further. Let's get rid of that. Another hacksaw. Wedgewood for the next project. Go over there. Stand that up. And now we had some wedges. What do we do with those? 
Now if I had a neat workshop I'd be able to find everything all the time but uh, by not being neat it keeps your mind flexible. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Right, when I find the veggies I'll come back to you. It's where you were where they were all the time. So we'll knock that in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use two of these. Or am I? Let's see how hard this is to, to drive in. That was pretty hard to drive home. Drift it home a bit further. You can see now that's below the level of the head. Can you see any gaps in this? I can't. And your wedge does not touch either side of the head. And you can't see any cracking on the ends. If you see cracking on the ends, you need at least one more wedge. Should we put another wedge in? Right, we need another number one wedge. And we have that there, that's number one look. Pop him in there like that. A bit more screwdriver torture. Right, has our hammer moved? No. Not a bit of it. Right, so that goes in there. And we will use our flap disc. off and then she's done. Right, our well, hammer is now hafted and he needs cutting off to length. Which we'll do like that. Notice the jaws of my vice are smooth, well within reason. Not those horrible crosshatch things. So we'll knock him off there. Yes, I could use a wood saw. There's one there, look. And the last job is go and plonk it on the uh, shaving horse and make that so that's symmetrical and put a chamfer on the end or you can use one of these devices and chamfer it but that would be cheating wouldn't it and that feels okay using a narrow handle like that allows for a bit of flex in it when you're actually using it when you're actually forging if you make a nice big fat handle like that one then you haven't got the flex you can see that one has been put in with a wedge that's just about the right size but it's split at the ends which means that the fit after the wedge has been put in, wasn't really tight enough. This one, as you can see, just started to split there. You've got your meat of your handle, you've got a nice hardwood wedge, and you've got two steel wedges. That won't come out, not without severe provocation. So, thank you very much for watching. 
we do a little finish up on that and show you when it's completely finished we'll actually oil it I'll need to wash my hands before we completely finish it and then we'll show you the final uh, result in the photograph thank you very much this year, the end of the draw knife couldn't be simpler Gently, gently, catchy monkey. See the way it goes in the horse? And there we go, and finished handle. A little bit of roughness there and we've cheated a bit we used a bit of uh, wet and dry paper so i don't actually possess any sandpaper but you can see the draw knife strokes in there a little bit of roughness there by that knot notice the knots in the bulb of the handle so that doesn't impinge on anything. If it was here, I'd be concerned and the handle would be a reject and it wouldn't even have made it to completion. And there we are. Right, now we give it a light coat with this special oil. Finest Tesco sunflower oil. Any veg oil will do. Some may be better than others, but uh, I've never find, found it to matter. Don't soak it, it doesn't need soaking. All the vegetable oil does is help keep the, uh, the timber of the handle flexible and supple long term if you put too much oil on and if you use certain oils like boiled linseed oil what tends to happen is they'll be slippery in the short term in the longer term you'll find that the oil goes semi-dry and goes tacky and it'll fetch the, uh, the skin off your hands Drop more. And if you see people paint marking their tools with paint here on the junction between the handle and the head, that's terribly unwise because you want the oil, a little bit of the oil, to actually penetrate the material that's actually in the head. Another thing I don't do, this is personal preference, is I don't heat up the, uh, or partially burn the handle to bring out the grain, because the grain's there. And you see the grain goes all the way through, top to bottom. If it goes off at an angle, it's going to break on that angle. So, one rehafted forging hammer. A little bit of work still needed on these pins, get them nice and smooth, get all the last of the pits out. What you don't want is uh, roughness or pits in these faces because they will transfer their little imprint to your work. Right, restored. Thank you for watching. It'll be put back to use hopefully this winter when I'll get my forge set up. Man's got to have an ambition. <laughs>